Every year, there are over 2 trillion searches on Google alone. That breaks down to over 63,000 per second. Greetings of the glorious day. My name is Daryl Rosser, and I'm one of those weird guys that gets paid hundreds of dollars an hour to do something called SEO, which barely anyone actually understands. Even my mom doesn't know what I do. So in this video, I wanna break down what an SEO actually does, how anyone can do the same, and how you can get started even if you're an absolute beginner. The first problem is, if you've ever Googled anything before, you've probably noticed there's only 10 results that come up. And sure, there is second pages and third pages and fourth pages and so on, but how many times do you actually click through there? In fact, if you look at the actual numbers, the number one ranking site on Google gets a click-through rate of 33.58% on average. The number two site gets roughly half that at 16.25% click-through rate. And number three only gets 9.67% on average. By the time we go all the way down to position 10, it's only 1.37% click-through rate. Now, all this means is that there's a huge amount of potential, there's a huge amount of searches every month to tap into, but there's a very limited number of places or positions that actually get traffic. So that's what we're gonna get into in this video. We're gonna look at exactly what SEO is from a beginner's perspective, how you can get started with this, and how you can figure out all this craziness that is the Google algorithm. And we'll start with the absolute basics. What is SEO. SEO stands for search engine optimization. And that pretty much says all it is. It's optimizing and tweaking your website and your web pages for search engines. So you generate more traffic and then ideally leads and revenue. And that all comes down to understanding Google's crazy algorithm. As of 2016, Google know of over 130 trillion, with a T, trillion web pages. And the superpower is sorting and ranking those web pages. So when you search for a keyword, the most relevant website comes up. And in SEO, simply someone that's done a whole bunch of testing to figure out what factors really influence the rankers to try and understand that algorithm. Because there are hundreds, if not thousands of factors that go into ranking a website. If I were to simplify that for you as much as possible, I would say there are three main factors that influence things. Authority, relevance, and trust. So I call it art, A-R-T. Is your website an authority on this topic? Is your website relevant to the search term, to the search keywords that are being searched? And is your website a trustworthy source of this information? So let's go through each of these and break down how exactly you can optimize your website and web pages to tap into these factors and increase your rankings. This all starts with keywords, which is a word or phrase you search in Google to find results. So if you're looking for a plumbing company in London, you're probably gonna search for something like plumbers in London or London plumbers or London plumbing company, okay? So let's use this as an example. There are two steps which you have an idea of what your keywords are gonna be. Number one is to decide on a keyword, is the main keyword you're gonna go after. And number two is expand that keyword keyword list. So again, we'll use the London Plumbers example. The way I approach this is using a tool called Ahrefs. I'm going to use the Keyword Explorer tool specifically. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search this keyword, Plumbers in London, to see what the search volume is and to see if there are additional keywords you should be targeting. Now looking at this keyword here, you can see there is actually another keyword that is better than this one. If you look at this one, it says Plumber London. Plumber London has a thousand searches a month, whereas the one we're looking at plumbers in London only has 250. So we're gonna switch our main focus to the plumber London keyword. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down a little bit further and look at the top ranking competitors for this keyword. The important thing you wanna look at here is this keywords column right here. And this shows us the number of keywords that our competitors are ranking for. If we click onto this number, it's literally gonna show us a list of all the keywords that our competitors are ranking for. So there's no guesswork involved here. We're looking at exactly what keywords our competitors are ranking for, and we're gonna copy what is working. Here's an example from plumlondon.com, where we're looking at all the keywords that include the word London. Now, aside from Plumber London, which is our main keyword, there's Plumbers in London, Plum in London, London Emergency Plumber, and so on. So what you wanna do is you wanna identify which keywords are relevant to your website, to your web page, and create a big list of them that you're gonna target all within this page. Now that we know our keywords, we need to create relevance for these keywords. That comes down to on-page SEO. The first step of this is to create a page 
that is about this topic of keywords. So we need a page about plumbing or plumbers or plumbing companies in London. It's all the same thing as one single topic. Now there are numerous factors you need to optimize your pages for. The most important factors are the title tag, the meta description, the URL, and the H1, the head and tag. Let's break those down, okay? Number one is your title tag. Your title tag is the thing that shows in the Google search at the top is the main title of your page. You wanna include your keyword here and you wanna optimize it to get the most clicks, treat it like an ad title. The next is the meta description. The meta description is the thing that shows below this title and it basically just describes your page. You wanna include the keywords here also, usually your secondary ones, and you wanna again optimize this for clicks. Treat it like an ad and get as many clicks through to your website as possible. The third thing is your URL. And if you're ranking an inner page, so the homepage is fine, but if you're ranking an inner page, then you wanna have the keyword in the URL. For example, yourwebsite.com slash keywords. So yourwebsite.com slash Heaton. You wanna include that keyword there. The next is your heading tag, your H1 tag. This is very important and it's essentially the page titles. So when you click onto the page, what is the big heading at the top? What is that gonna say? Again, you wanna make sure you include your keyword here is a, another important optimization point. On top of this, you wanna lightly mention your keyword within your content, within your paragraphs. However, you need to do this in a natural way. You need to write your content for humans. That means don't do something like this, where you just paste in a huge list of keywords and locations at the bottom of your website. This is called keyword stuffing. It is an outdated practice and it's not good or effective in 2020. To simplify this even further, I recommend using a tool like Surfer, and that allows you to analyze the top ranking websites and look at what data shows is the most important factors. So they look at various different factors and they correlate it with how strongly that shows as being an important factor for this specific keyword because every single keyword is slightly different. Once you've got your content in place and it is relevant, next we need to focus on authority. So authority, relevance, trust. And this comes down to off-page SEO, also known as link building. Now, if you break this down in a very simple way, links are essentially votes for your website. The more votes in theory, the better your website will rank. However, there's also a quality aspect at play here. Having 200 blog comments isn't a good quality type of link. So it's not really gonna do anything. If anything, it may be negative. So the quality also accounts for this. And if you wanna break down what is a good quality link versus a bad quality link, the easiest way to understand the difference is the more difficult a link is to acquire, the better the quality of that link. If you have a link from the New York Times, it's not exactly easy to replicate that. Whereas if you have a link from a blog comment, anyone can just go on there and post a blog comment and that is essentially spam at that point. Now, how you acquire these links is really my personal speciality. It comes down to something called outreach. Outreach is where you reach out to other webmasters and convince them to link to your website. Generally speaking, there are two main types of links that you're gonna be building. Number one is guest posts, where you just say, hey, can I write a blog post for your website? And then of course you can include a link from that blog post. The second type is a link insertion. And that is where you convince them to add a link in an existing piece of content they have. This is less effort because they just go in there and add a link rather than you have to write up a new blog post for them. Now the approach to getting these webmasters to add a link is where SEOs can sometimes get a little bit spammy. And this is where you get emails like, greetings of the glorious day, please include a link for me, okay? And that's not gonna cut it today, okay? You've gotta incentivize them. And there are two approaches for doing that. Number one is to create better content. Look at this article here, looking at different great web designs in the plumbing niche. If you have a better designed website, then you can reach out to them and just say, hey, I noticed you didn't link to our website here. We just recently redesigned it and I think it'd be a great resource and great inspiration for your readers, okay? So you're providing value by creating better content. The second approach is to offer money and reach out to websites and ask them if you can pay money to create content, to create a blog post or to add a link to their website. And many websites allow this and it allows you to scale this way quicker and easier, but at the risk of breaking Google's terms. It's not something Google want you to do as webmasters, but it works, so that is up to you. And of course, you can also just pay services that do this for you at scale, and I'll include the link to my own in the description 
below. The final thing you need is trust. And by the way, if you like this video so far, I trust that you've clicked that like button. So look at this search term here. This is how to lose weight. And if you look at the authors of the content here, you notice almost all of them are doctors, dietitians, and nutritionists. And there is a deliberate reason for that. Google want to rank trusted people and trusted content. And it's definitely more trusted if it's by a doctor than someone like myself on how to lose weight. So when you're creating your website, how can you show that you're a trustworthy source? Can you show that you're an expert on a topic? If not, can you hire an expert to be kind of the face behind your content and fact check it for you? Do you have a clear contact page? Do you have a clear about page? If you're selling products online, do you have clear shipping terms, refund policies, and important things that users are interested in knowing also. This isn't only for search engines, it's also about the user experience and showing them that you're a trustworthy website. Once you've got all this in place, you simply rinse and repeat this process. Link building is arguably the most important ranking factor. So continue building links every single month until you're ranking well for the keywords that you're targeting. And there, expand the keywords even more. Can you target more keywords in your existing content or can you create new content and expand the keywords that way? And then again, build more links and repeat over and over again until you're getting more traffic, more leads, more revenue, more sales. That is the goal of SEO. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave a comment below this video and I'll be sure to answer them. If you liked the video, go ahead and smash that like button for me and I'll see you in the next video.